Hello, hello guys, welcome to another Optic Straight Debates. I'm Andras. My name is Taylor. Hello. Today we're going to be uh, talking about a topic that is very common today. It's a very interesting topic. Um, it, we have to deal. It has to deal with uh, thermal and uh, night uh, analog night vision devices. And since we received many questions on the topic, I gathered a bunch of questions on our emails, and uh, I uh, came up with some of the most commonly used ones. And I would ju just like to start by asking, what is the difference in terms of physical appearance when it comes to thermal devices and analog night vision devices? Well, uh, I would say this topic is very common because the pricing, especially if we have devices with a uh, generation 2 plus and the thermals is very close. So people always ask, what should I buy? Either a thermal or a Gen 2 plus uh, night vision device. We also have here some uh, generation 1 analog night vision devices which are a little bit less competitive with, uh, compared to, to thermals. They are much cheaper. So somebody who is looking for a for a night vision scope, analog night vision scope for 500 euros, it usually doesn't look at uh, at thermals because they are uh, too expensive. But if you look at the at the generation 2 plus night vision devices and at thermals, they're priced very very similarly. If we look at the physical properties of all of those, we can usually see that, especially with generation uh, 2 plus. Uh, those devices are a little bit bigger and they usually have their housing made out of, uh, out of uh, metal while with thermals it usually housing is made out of uh, polymers or some other plastic materials so this is in physical properties this is the first difference then if you look at the clip-ons uh, we have two clip-ons here we have a thermal core pulsar core and then we have a um, uh, the Yanke night vision clip-on, the analog uh, generation 2 plus and if we look at both of them you see that uh, the um, thermal is quite smaller yeah, so. and the second thing about this the, the digital, uh, not digital, the analog night vision devices they always need a, a infrared illuminator while thermals they don't need any illuminator so they, they don't emit any light uh, towards the um, the objects which we are observing. That's that's the main difference. So smaller, lighter, usually made out of polymer without any additional infrared illuminator while the the analog Gen 2 Plus devices which can be compared on uh, um, based the comparison can be made based on price while in physical appearance uh, they are made out of metal, they're heavier, they're bigger and they usually feature an um, external infrared illuminator. If we talk in numbers when uh, uh, we are on the topic of price, mm -hmm. uh, as regards the Gen 1 in analog night vision, where does the where do the prices The pricing fall starts at around 200 euros. So and then very, it goes very affordable. Very affordable and goes up to 600, 700, 800. It's, it's the top. It depends either if we are looking at the uh, night vision scope or binoculars or a rifle scope or a, or a clip-on while the clip-ons are never Gen 2, uh, Gen 1, they're always Gen 2. So the monoculars, the binoculars and uh, the rifle scopes uh, of uh, Generation 1, they're usually from 200 to 800 euros in this, in this range. While with thermals, everything start, starts at around 1000 euros, most of the thermal devices, and then it goes up all the way to 5600. 6,000, 5,000, 6,000, 6, this is the most mm. common. While the professional devices usually cost much more. You can talk even about 20 and 30. With analog night vision, we can also get up to 5, Well, 000, yeah, 6, with, with the Gen, Gen 2, it usually starts at around 3,000 euros and goes all the way up to 8,000 euros. So the best Gen 2 devices, Gen 2 Plus, are more expensive than usually the thermals. Uh, and they work really differently. So even if the I would say that the physical appearance differences are the smallest. The biggest difference is how each of those two devices work. That's, that's the main difference. Now we get to the fun part, so the differences in optical characteristics. Well, this is digital. So even though it's thermal, you have a sensor in front behind the objective lens. Then you ha we have all the electronics in the body and then the display 
at the rear and that means that we always look into the display either in this binoculars we look into the display or with this clip on you will look through the scope into the display and the limiting factor of this setup is normally the the resolution of the sensor and the resolution of the display and this is something where the analog night vision devices of uh, generation 2 plus or generation 3 even have their advantage because they have a much higher resolution so you're able to see the details better than with, with thermals at least in this moment even though the technology in thermal uh, thermal imaging is developing really rapidly it's still not there yeah but it will be yeah. sooner or later it will be but at the moment most of the of the devices which are available on the market to civilians uh, usually the the um, the resolution is better in the analog night vision devices of generation 2 plus or or higher uh, and the second thing what is different is this that thermals they work without any any uh, light so you don't need any infrared illuminator on them to beam light towards the animals or objects which are you observing uh, and together the reflection to get the image they are passive they don't need any, any, any stray light or any ambient light, nothing is, is mm -hmm. needed. And they work the same during the day and during the night. So when the object is hot, they detect it, you are able to see it. When it's cold, you are not seeing it. Well, at least you are only seeing the differences in, in temperatures. But the main point is this device is passive. While the Gen 2 devices of analog type, they need an illuminator, infrared illuminator which usually then the device is not mm -hmm. passive so you need to to point the light towards the object which you are wishing to see mm -hmm. and then when the light reflects you get an image in in the device this has an advantage and a couple of disadvantages so the advantage is that you're able to see the details really nicely so first of all when you're looking at let's say red deer with a big trophy with thermal, you will have a problem seeing the trophy in detail because the trophy is usually cold. So you're not able to see it that well. Uh, so the, the animal has to come close, that you see those fine differences in temperature and you're able to see the trophy well. With, uh, with uh, analog generation 2 plus, you're able to see every detail on the trophy. First of all, because you have a, an advantage in resolution. Second of all, because you just collect the light which gets reflected from the trophy so this is the big advantage the disadvantage is normally the mass and the size you see this big light it's big it's heavy and so on uh, the second disadvantage is that if you have fog rain any branches or, or bushes uh, on the way of light you will get the reflection from them and you will not be able to see well uh, especially in, in fog and in, in rain you will not be able to see anything because all the droplets, the small droplets, will reflect light back to you and you only see a bright image without any details. Um, and the animals can detect infrared light if it's below 850 uh, nanometers of wavelength. So that means this, if you have a really good uh, Gen 2 Plus uh, device then you can have, uh, let's say, 875 uh, nanometers of wavelength and it's not well visible, but you're still, to the animal, mm -hmm. but you're still able to detect and get a good image. Analog light vision devices do usually operate around 850 nanometers, am I right? Yeah, the Gen 2 Plus. Yes. Uh, the Gen 1, they operate lower. So with so Gen 1, you need... detectable. With yeah, light. you're detectable because with Gen 1, you usually need an uh, infrared illuminator of around 800 nanometers of uh, wavelength and the animals are able to see you because when you even if you if you put the, the illuminator to power three if power two yeah. power three you yeah if you pull it to a high higher intensity setting the yes. animals will see you with the uh, gen 2 plus this is not an issue uh, that a big of an issue because the illuminators are usually in a higher um, in the high range of, uh, of wavelength of, of infrared light but still, the thermals with their passive uh, uh, capabilities are much better in this aspect. You're not able to, to detect a thermal device. Yeah. Well, no animal detects a thermal device. While the, um, uh, 
they can detect uh, infrared illuminator if it's not completely invisible, if it's in, in the visible spectrum of light. Um, one, I would say, difference between thermals and uh, analog night vision is also that thermals usually need uh, calibration every couple of minutes. That means that the image freezes for a second or two and you are not able to see what's happening in that, in that moment. And especially with clip-ons, when you're shooting, this can be a little bit... Um, and the moving targets. Yeah, probably, and they, yeah. they freeze and then when the image comes back, they're already... So it's meters. better if you set in, in such um, circumstances, it's better to set the calibration to manual. It's easier. Yeah. You just press the calibration at the moment when you know that you are not going to shoot. Uh, it is also true that the best thermals uh, have a shutterless calibration. That means that you are seeing the image all the time. Mm -hmm. So it all depends again on the level of quality. Yeah. So basically these two devices, these two types of devices are really, really different, even though they cost roughly the same. Uh, I would say if you're hunting, let's say, wild boars, then the thermals are definitely better because you're able to see into the forest, into the bushes, really far away. The detection range of these devices can be two kilometers, mm -hmm. while with even the best night vision, anything above 500 meters is already almost a miracle because the infrared illuminators are not strong enough to illuminate objects which are 500 meters away. Um, so basically you get a better range with them while you see you get a better resolution and better rendering of details with the, with the analog still today um, in practical what again is a it's a advantage with uh, with thermals let's say if we compare the clip-ons after the shot with a with a normal analog it's really really hard to to it's really really hard to assess the situation, what happened after the shot. Because if the animal runs into the bushes or something like that, you're not able to see it with this. First of all, you're not fast enough to detect where it is. Second of all, the bushes the, the bushes reflects the emitting light from the illuminator and you just get a, a, the image full of light, nothing else. With thermals, it's really easy. You just see the trail. You see the trail and you see everything and it's impossible to hide. Uh, in front of the thermal. So this is the advantage of the thermal. The disadvantage is the battery. The battery life on thermals is much, much uh, smaller than with uh, analog night vision. With analog night vision you can have a small battery. I think AA batteries inside here or, or CR123A. I think one of these two types. And you can have it for years. With thermals always pack an additional batteries. <laughs> yeah. No matter where you go because thermals they do eat battery much faster than the analog and night vision devices. Uh, then another disadvantage of, uh, of analog devices is that uh, the photo cathode which is inside, uh, the tube which uh, amplifies light, it has a limited lifespan. Yeah. That means that with, with hours of, uh, of operation, uh, its life uh, just gets shortened and shortened and shortened. So we usually say about seven to ten years and you will need to replace the tube. So we have to point another thing here with uh, the thermal device you can use them normally during the day, during yeah, the night. Yeah. With analog you must be careful not to burn the sensor during daytime, right? You not the sensor because they don't have a sensor but the, the, the tube, the tube, the yes, amplifying tube. The amplifying tube, yeah. Uh, this is something which is really, really important. And uh, the battery life is connected to this, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, not the battery life, but the life of the tube. The life of the tube, yeah. yeah. If you use it right. during, the, during the daytime, during the strong light, you will burn it. It will, it will just die much faster. That's what I meant. Um, and this is something that doesn't happen with the, with the thermals. Thermals, they work the same way during the day, during the night. They only detect what is uh, warm and what is cold. With uh, analog second generation or generation 2 plus, you have a problem, you can only use them during, uh, during the night and you can damage them by exposing them to bright sunlight. What about moving cars with flashing lights? Is it's, that a problem? It's not a big problem. For a high quality, all of those devices which have a bright light cut off, it's not a problem. But still, if you bring it inside and you put it on and you put it on a table and there, there are 
your the normal damage. light ambient light is there you will damage it and even if you're really careful after six seven eight years of of, uh, of use the the tube the amplifying tube will just run out of its lifespan so this is something what doesn't happen with uh, with thermals they work forever almost so it's uh, in this aspect it's the thermals have a couple of advantages while if you're really into hunting animals with trophies and so on the analog still have the advantage of better resolution you're better you're able to achieve a better uh, recognition of all the details also for the for the gender of gender of the animals uh, the the analog devices are a little bit better you will be able to see the gender a little bit faster and more precisely but you have to take good care of the intensifying tube yeah normally you will have to be careful what you're doing with the with the device um i think that you covered the advantages and disadvantages within this one topic more the one more is that with uh, with all these uh, thermals uh, with most of the new thermals like this helions you're able to take photos and videos oh yes of this course. is something that you are not able to do with it's an animal. important point <laughs> yeah so this is something and regarding the recoil both of them work well however my personal experience is that i would still think that uh, thermals will handle really harsh recoil better due to the materials or the, the build, the the build yeah. itself and they're usually lighter and smaller so uh, because of this reason they will withstand recoil a little mm -hmm. bit better we tested those cores on uh, on free trade lapua magnum for many many shots and they work perfectly and okay this Yanka also <laughs> was yeah, tested a lot in 338 and also works but still it's don't take it as a as a fact don't take it as a something 100% uh, correct and so on but my my gut feeling tells me that i think the thermals will work better on a on a really hard kicking rifle for a longer time than than the analog um, devices because just because they are smaller and lighter so less mass less problems with recoil. Is there anything else that we mm. should cover? I think we covered most of the things. If you forgot anything, I think the, our viewers can still use comments below. And, and they can also send us an email if uh, you have any questions. If you like the video, hit like of course, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you guys. Thank you, bye. bye, -bye.